our guests are in the studio. Frank Arnold Dompre is the Member of Parliament for Insawam Adwejri. I also know that he's the Chairman of Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee. Thanks for joining me, sir. Roland, it's, it's a pleasure to mm. be here always. Yeah. Parliament has not resumed, has it? No. Okay. All right. Uh, Alasa Suni is a Member of Parliament for Tamale North, and we, uh, we know that we had the investiture of the Yana uh, just before the close of the weekend. The president was looking splendid in was his he? smoke. Charlie, it was beautiful. Was he? You say? No, I was just clearing my throat. Okay. <coughs> After clearing <laughs> your throat, um, uh, since you're chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, what's the latest then on the, the Norway saga? Since we haven't heard a lot, maybe you will give us a more update on the subject. Well, I don't, uh, first of all, good morning to your viewers, uh, good people of this country. Um, I don't think he wants to be uh, mischievous. I think the, the matter <laughs> oh, is, is dead. You know, is it uh, dead? Nothing has come out of uh, it after the last, if I forgive me, encounter. Of, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's dead. I think it's dead now. And it's mute. Unless there is a reason for us to resurrect it. There is no reason. So let's leave it as it is until something comes out significantly important and then we can look at it in context. So it's clear and it's quiet now. We have peace. My good friend, Suhine, will contest. Uh, we will not contest that. He will agree <laughs> with me that there is peace. Uh, Oslo I didn't is want over. to ask any questions. This is why I just wanted it to be an intro. But uh, since you he has brought raised me, the issue, like no, he hasn't brought you. I'm <laughs> <laughs> not supposed to comment on this. Uh, yeah, I think it's dead. He's brought Meaning, me what government back. has not activated or has no intention of going forward <coughs> with the. So we have no intention. What's going but I know that we have an intention to have a, 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 a is there a, a chancery in Norway? So mm -hmm. what's the policy direction on it? If you are, well, I'm unable, if you are not aware, you just, uh, I'm unable to comment extensively on this matter. You know, I think at the appropriate time, if the committee is updated by the the ministry, we will accordingly also put out that uh, update to you. What do we say so in local balance? Adiapa. Mm. Matter quench. Mm -hmm. All right, but uh, we also had uh, a great event. But more importantly, we we buried somebody we all know over the weekend, uh, Chairman Tinge Jako. And um, mm -hmm. again, may he so rest in peace. All of us here, uh, his colleagues as well. But uh, Dagban was also the investiture was good, uh, and the president and uh, the new Yana dominating the front pages this morning. Yeah, uh, thank you, Roland. Uh, is that our first topic? Yes. By the way? yes okay, yes, so yes. let me Peace. say good morning to Peace our... Peace returning to that one. Uh, let me say good morning to our cherished viewers, and uh, thank you once again for the opportunity to be here. Um, I think that it is good news, and we have to, first of all, uh, convey our uh, gratitude as a nation to um, the three eminent chiefs, uh, especially who, you know, over the years have managed this situation of uh, bringing lasting peace <coughs> uh, to Dagbong. We also need to commend, you know, uh, the people themselves, uh, the royals especially, for their patience with each other and the compromises that they have made over the years for us to get to the point uh, where we have a new year now. But Roland, it's important that in the discussion we do not forget um, what is essential. What is essential is how we got to where we uh, got to over the weekend and how we should ensure that never again uh, do we have, I mean, we should ensure we don't have to go through that same path again. Um, for those who may be 16 or even 20, in their mid-20s, they may not even remember what happened that we are so excited about a new king in Dagong. What happened is that in 2002, March, the Yanna who is the overlord of the Dagbong state, was murdered. He was decapitated. His head 
was revered of. I say it painfully, and parts of his body was bent. And this was after a consistent attack of about three days on his palace. A palace that was less than a hundred meters away from a police station. A palace that we were told had military protection. Unfortunately, after his murder, when questions were asked about why he could not be saved by the police or the military, a number of things came up. For example, the military claimed that their battery to the armored vehicle that they had had run down and that they had a spare battery in their storeroom, but the key to the storeroom was missing. And within the three days that his palace was under attack, communications in and out of Yendi was shut down. And this was at a time that indigents from Dagbong were largely in charge of security of this country. The national security advisor at the time was an indigenous of Dagbong. The interior minister was an indigenous of Dagbong. The defense minister, the, you know, regional security. I mean, they were in charge of security at that time. So it was curious that all of these people were in charge of security when this thing happened. Now, President Kufo at the time uh, fired most of them. And set up the Waco Commission. I mean, that's a story that can be told another time. But what was important was that he also set up this uh, committee of eminent chiefs to handle the traditional aspects of the whole thing. Now, the committee have been working for a very long time. When President Kufour left power after six years without being able to resolve the issue, the NDC took over and decided, like they said, and I think that people misinterpret what was happening around that time with the politicization or so-called politicization. You see, we live in a country, and I always talk of the social contract that we have with the government. So if there were such security lapses that seemed deliberate, and any citizen raised questions about what happened, the person was being a responsible citizen and not playing politics. How come the military that was there could not protect him? How come the police could not protect him? Those, those were legitimate you know, questions that any responsible citizen should ask. So when the NDC came to power, they decided to revisit this case. And some people were arrested. They were prosecuted. Unfortunately, <coughs> the court did not think the evidence that was adduced was enough to convict these people. So they were acquitted and discharge. Now that was the criminal aspect that the NDC pursued. I think in pursuit of this criminal aspect, it therefore you know, led to situations where both families boycotted the eminent chief's engagements. So for a very long time, they were not meeting. Until 2014, when President Mahama said that as a son of the area, he needed to resolve this matter. So. There was a meeting in April 2014 at the Pediasi Lodge with the eminent chiefs and, the, and both families. And they were impressed upon to resume meetings and to continue to engage, to find a traditional solution to the problem. So from that point, the meeting started, which led to agreements and the roadmap that was you know, agreed on. Now, the implementation of the roadmap required that some traditional homes had to be built in order for the funerals to be performed. So six of those traditional homes were built in 2015, 2016. And it is those traditional homes that enable, I mean, so as they were trying to implement this roadmap in 2015, 2016, they, they hit a snag again because one family decided to pull out again and all of that. So it was shelved because especially we're approaching elections. Now after the election, President Akufuado and his government saw the wisdom in what had been attained by 2016 and started re-engagement, which led to the performance of the funerals and then the, the installation of <coughs> a new king. So 
this is the trajectory that we have come as far as this Dagbong issue is concerned. So as, 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 as sons and daughters of Dagbong, we are proud that this traditional aspect has been resolved through the contribution and ingenuity of many people over the years. And we, we, we are hopeful that the criminal aspect, you know, because crime, crime, crime is, 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 is I mean, it, it does not expire. So we are hoping that somehow, you know, because it is through the resolution of the but criminal you know aspect. we've been there through the courts before. Yeah, but mm. it doesn't mean, you see, for six years, I mean, we, we couldn't do anything. Then we had eight years. Nothing really could happen, even though the court, you know, uh, some people were arraigned. They, they, the evidence was not good enough. But I'm saying that if we are committed, and, and guess what? It happened, and I think this government has a chance to deal with it. It happened when President Akufuado was the Attorney General. Do you understand? And Apu too, who is now the IGP, was the Director of CID. In fact, he led the investigations. So if he had frustrations as CID boss, now he's IGP. I think if he's committed to go back to his notes, he can find a solution uh, and help the president to also look at that aspect. But generally, we are proud that we have been able to achieve this feat. We are thankful to God for how far he has brought us. And it is our hope and prayer that Dagbon will roar and rise <coughs> again. So now we have peace. And, uh, what is that? Uh, first kudos first, to all those who have played the yeah, instrumental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that as a country, all of us need to be proud of this. It's for a long time. Um, the Dagbon crisis has always remained as a blot. And it's something that we have not been too proud of as a country. Uh, if you look at the history, the Dagbon kingdom, very, very a respected and important kingdom. If you look into the annals of the history as a country. Um, I think that some of the things is best left to history, you know, than, uh, you know, putting emphasis on it. Of course, uh, and I'm happy he comes from the area, I give you recounting how the, the beginning up to the end. But the fact be told, you know, once upon a time in our history, uh, certain people, you know, played politics with, the, the, unfortunately, the Dagbon crisis. Some people play politics with it, you know. Good enough, and it only reminds me of uh, the, the, the Itlus uh, matter, which was resolved by this government, and it was started by the previous administration. Uh, the conflict between Ghana on the you know, the court process. Yes. No, I mean it was begun by yes. the previous administration. You're talking about the continuation. Yes, that's the point I'm trying to emphasize. Okay. This government came into power and continued with it until the Itlos ruling, you know, came out and knew into the benefit of our country. I think that this present administration has done well. If you listen to the eminent chiefs and if you listen to the president himself, there is no point in time that the president has arrogated all the credit to himself. President Anadu has never said that. He said that all the previous presidents have played a role. All the previous president has, we've all played a role, inclusive of President Mahama, and everybody has the, has done his part. It's just by the grace of God that you know we've been able to resolve this matter in his time. Okay, now we, a, we have done so well, and we all need to be careful with our narration, notwithstanding mm -hmm. the achievement we have chalked so far, because if you're not careful, and God forbid. You know, we begin to speak in a manner that will lead to something else. It will not be too good for us. I think that we should all support the peace process. So far, so good. We need that bond to be peaceful. It is peaceful now. Let's keep supporting it. Uh, and the media has also been very supportive. Let's be careful what we say. And then let's support government to, to get over this matter. What the good people of that bond need now is development. And I hear uh, big, big projects are ongoing, uh, huge infrastructure projects like water extension projects and all that. That is what we, that one wants to see. And I'm happy the role the president personally has played in this matter. If you look at his commitment to, to, to ensure that that one sees peace, there's no question mark about it. Uh, I want to commend the, the MPs who also have their constituency in that area for the role they've all played. I think there's been much 
of responsibility displayed in their utterances. And I doff my, my cap to all the MPs around. So it, it's good news for Ghana. We need to be proud about it. I think elsewhere, it would have degenerated. We've been able to manage it very well, and we all need to be proud about it. Let's reduce the politicization of this double matter and move forward for us. Let's move for once, move forward for once with this whole Dagbon crisis. It has plagued this country for too long, and it's time for us to get over it. Mm. Well, let's move on. Uh, I just wanted to agree with my brother on one note. The fact that politicization of the matter will not help anybody. I mean, it is a fact. But when he says that some people played politics with it in the past, that is where I disagree with him. You see, it is unfair to say that because the murder happened under an NPP regime, NPP should not be held responsible for it. But if the, 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 the new king is installed in an NPP regime, then the president and the NPP deserves credit. That becomes inconsistent. What we must urge all to do is to avoid the politicization of the, 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 the whole chieftaincy matter. But there are criminal aspects, and any citizen is enjoined to ensure that you either prevent crime from happening, or when they happen, you insist that your government does something about it. Now, an insistence or a request of your government to do something about crime that has taken place mm. does not amount to politicization no. of that crime. Okay, fine. I, I hope you get, I hope you know, you get the point fine. that you I'm see, making. Roland, it does not amount no, to... I, I won't believe what the point. You see, once look. upon a time, we had a, 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 a former president. Right, mm. I didn't want and to it's go important there. for us to go fact, there. Fact, A former president saying with, that with I have evidence nah. of the perpetrators, people who ensure that the crime was committed. A former, that, president, that former president is still living. You mean you see, former President Rollins? He said that. Yeah, he said he was willing to cooperate with the government. No, he then. said he had evidence yeah, of people he had who evidence. perpetrated Charlie, the crime. Charlie, 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 yeah. So they should produce it. So, and they never produced that crime. Charlie, that okay, evidence? Okay, okay, <laughs> you know? Okay, okay, sometimes. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I think that it was. Uh, we all have different memories on what really yeah. transpired. I was in the newsroom of uh, GBC when the incident happened. It was terrible. The story right? happened, uh, was uh, brought in by a correspondent. They put a hold. And you know. In those times, we used the jargons. Yeah. The, there was a ruler, they put a red pen hold. Yeah. <laughs> then there was stop. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, it was, and then we could hear chilling accounts from the correspondents. Yeah. And I was in charge of record. Those days, we used reels to record yeah. the audio. Yeah. Yeah. And I was the one who went to but do the recording. But it was put on hold. Yeah, but. And you what see, the correspondent I, told me that day, as uh, I somebody, think, I think it, it was, it was lawyer, lawyer Waja, who, who was, uh, I think he's still with GBC, right? Yeah, yeah. This was Waja for radio. I was yeah, a radio then. Radio it was, uh, it was not a nice experience. And knowing terrible. that there have been some days. inactions that, uh, but let's move on. Yeah. I grew up in uh, Tamale. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. all right. So uh, <laughs> we ha we have this story ongoing about uh, government axing three CEOs. Mm -hmm ordered to retire by March 2016. And you have pictures uh, on the front page of the Ghanaian Times, for example, which is indicating that um, these in individuals, uh, you have Kujo Usuefri, Isaac Osei, Anthony Nsiasari, Maxwell, Kofi Juma, you see them on the front page of the Ghanaian <coughs> Times. And if you go to the center mm -hmm. spread, page 16, you have all these. Uh, you also have uh, Dr. Keke Sapong, whose picture has also been attached. And a number of the personalities as well. They, um, CEOs mm -hmm. of various public corporations, and we know that the Public Services Act uh, also indicates that uh, we have the retirement age of 60. You could be given uh, some extensions mm -hmm. of two years, two years, and one. Well, we've seen it either with the IGP and some of those other uh, state agencies being given an extension, etc. But we have what the law says. But we also have <coughs> what the norm has been in the Fourth Republic and the action being taken uh, supposedly by the executive led by the president, etc., because he is the appointing authority in many of these pers perspectives. Now, let me start with you. We're, we're, we're in uh, to do a debate on this, mm -hmm. but we also have the, also, uh, also the law to contend with. What's your own view in the first place? on these well, actions? I find myself in a very difficult position because uh, all of them are very, very good friends. 
distinguishing the friendship, I also know their capability. Dr. Nsia Sare, Kofi Juma, Kojo Uswefriye, and uh, Azeko Say himself. Splendid guys. And I know what up their sleeves and uh, what they can contribute to the upliftment and development of our country. But the law is a law, you see, fact be told. And uh, I think that for a long time we have not reverted our minds uh, to this section of the act particularly and we've allowed things to go. Mm. If for a certain good reason uh, the executive feels that no, we want to apply the law and actually we should be seen as a country to be respecting the law. And so that is a decision that the executive has reached. I have no qualms with that. Um, I only, it's only sad that we are going to lose them if government so decides that that is how uh, the executive is going to go about it because they still have some uh, good experience that they can share. But going forward and taking the matter in broader perspective, we may have to ask ourselves as a country if that act would have to be amended if we need to. I think the UK or some other jurisdictions, they have a similar law. And I think US also, US also they've, they've, they've amended the, the age limit. Uh, I stand for correction. They have amended the state limit. So if we decide that we want to amend it, we may have to look at it and it's something that i cannot decide on that is sitting in this studio at this time it's quite interesting and i i just feel that going forward we take a decision on this as a country whether we should allow the status quo to remain or we should amend the act as it states and then uh, um, look at it in context it's a very difficult one for me to comment uh, to comment on it because <laughs> i know if you look at somebody like um isaac Kosei, a long span of experience and he has a lot to contribute and where the position is occupying as the CEO of TOR, a very sensitive area. I don't think you want to hand over TOR to anybody at all. It's somebody who has come a certain leverage of experience to, to, to occupy such a position. Um, in Siasari, over, over a fleeting period he's been in office, evidence of what he's doing is all over the place at the Ghana Health Service. He's doing so well. So I don't know. I don't know the thinking of, of the executive, but uh, we also need to be to, to be seen to be respecting the law. Uh, if we just oppose this with what the comments, official comments of the Auditor General has been over the period, especially um, with the salient issues about employment and then also people who may have overstayed and drawing salaries and even deliberate actions that are taken by people to reduce ages. Well, you have to say that the law is the law, but also we can take some special mm -hmm. recognition for some people who perhaps uh, give a lot more than the ordinary. Yeah, um, Roland, I, I agree with you. Um, I think that one of the problems that we have with our government today is that somehow they believe propaganda and communication can solve every problem. I'll explain why I am saying so. If you look at these CEOs, most of them have come under one allegation or the other. That have not been convincingly investigated and dealt with. The president, like he did in the case of Bost and others, decides maybe to ask them to go home. But instead of stating or assuring the people that it is in response to some of the and healthy findings we may have had as a result of their operations. A different reason is given. Why? Because if the actual reasons are given, the assumption is that it will add to the perception of corruption and misdoings in the government. I don't get you. <laughs> Roland, these people were appointed. Very have we seen the appointment letters? <laughs> Did the appointment letters say that they were being given contracts. Because the article that is being used 
as reasons for their dismissal, says clearly that if you attain the age of 60 and you go on retirement, you can be engaged for two years, an additional two years, and an additional one year. Mm -hmm. In fact, there is even a discussion as to what exactly does the law mean? Is it that when you are 60, or is it the case that you can even be given this contract when you are above 65? Because it, it seems vague. It simply says that when you attain the age of 60 and you are on retirement, and it is crucial that government use, I mean, government needs your services, a government can give you a contract. So it doesn't say that when you are 60. It says when you are 60 and you go on a retirement, and the government find use for you in future, it can give you a contract of 221. So some people even argue that even beyond 65, if the government find use for you, the government can give you a contract of 221. So if they are telling us that they are using the first interpretation that you are 60, so you are entitled to 221, it will be important to find the appointment letters. And the age at uh, by which time and, you were and how 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 long how many times have their contracts been renewed? Mm -hmm. Were their contracts renewed? You know, after the first two. And were they just sixty when, when they were appointed? It's it's important, well, but you just don't tell us mm -hmm. that you appointed them. You didn't tell us you appointed them on contract. And you are alluding to the fact that they could be. They could be. The president may have problems with some of them. It may not even be about corruption or misdeeds at their workplaces. He may just have problems with some of them. You know, we know some of them, for example, have presidential ambitions. <laughs> the president may just have problems with some of them. And it may be the reasons why well, he's letting them go. Absolutely. You see, <laughs> Roland, what is also interesting <laughs> is the fact that, for me, it brings to the fore the issue of, you know, the the, 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 the call by some people for us to have a ceiling on the age limit for president. This mm. is just a state agency. And we don't think by our laws that someone beyond 65, if we are sticking to this story, will have the needed energy and frame of mind to run such an institution. And this is being pushed by a 70-plus-year-old man. There's nothing wrong with him being 70-plus. Mm. But I'm saying that is our, our, our laws consistent with what we really want to portray? Because you say that for a state agency, if the person is beyond 60, give him a contract of 2221 if you need his services. But the presidency, you can be 100. But that's the constitution stated. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying that maybe this brings about a need for us to have a discussion. A real look. You know, because some people have called for that discussion before. That, I mean, should we have a limit mm -hmm. for the presidency too, like we have for state agencies? Should we? But, I mean, that is a discussion I would like to take part part in. I don't have a position. I don't know whether we should have a limit or not yet. I think it will be an interesting debate to have and I will be I would like to be convinced by any of the sides as to whether we have we should have a limit or not. But the point has to be made that look, this story is 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 you not telling it, us you think it was just planted because it, No, planted. I, I, I think the reasons given for their dismissal is not consistent with what is real because they haven't been given a contract per my understanding we all recall when they were appointing them and they were they didn't tell them they were they didn't tell us they were giving them a contract i mean and and so at what point did the contract start at what point and why are they telling us when it has ended when and when the law specifically says that two two one you know so i mean have they done five years already this government is not five years old I mean, so were they 60 when they were, when they were picked? Now, they, we have been told some of them are 65 now. So they were 63 when they were given. But did they tell us they were giving them a contract of two years? What happens to the other two, two and one that they may be entitled to? 
didn't they live up to expectation? And yeah. is it the case that because they didn't live up to expectation, that's why they are not giving them three more? Yeah. They should tell us more. I think that. I think that. Franklin, I ask you as yours. Is it more? They should tell us more. I think that what my good friend said, I have to uh, respond when he says that. Uh, they have presidential ambitions, they are allegations. I said the allegations. I, I said this, the this, fact this, is the that story, the president has problems with But the story with is them. significantly different from whether they have an ambition to run for presidency or not, or they are corrupt, uh, corruption allegation against any of them. If anybody, I don't think any of these four, I mean, for the purposes of argument, has been in the media over any corruption allegation. Oh, I, don't, National I, do not know. You I do not know about it. I do not know. National Health Insurance? Now, now, the drones so, at the Ghana so the, Health the Service? Point, mm, that, that's not corruption. The tour ministry, oh, a tour, that, tour mm. and the ministry fight over, well, you know, those look, things are there. I, see, I don't want see, us to go see, there, but I, they are I, there. I, I think that people, people I said there are alleged, allegations that people, have not been properly oh, investigated to convince all of us. People make all sort of allegations. In my view, there's nothing significant against any of these people whose name have pop up. I agree with you when you said that the story is scanty. Uh, the story about the retiring is scanty. Yeah, the content. I, I, so I the, the content the looks, and if, you are, if you've been a practicing journalist but, yeah. before, you know sometimes stories are placed <laughs> yeah, from, placed. from the I, high... High levels. From the high might. Well, they just I tell you, Charlie, Monday, make sure this story is page and my, point, my point is very simple. I agree <laughs> with him when he scanty. says... We you, may have you, call, to you can call this nobody. Matter. You call this one. He says, I we, have no we idea. We may have to you. subject this to a thorough debate <coughs> you know, on the what retiring age. What do you think? Well, I've said that we should look at it. Yeah. I mean, my uh, introductory remarks, I've said that okay. we, we must look Eugene at it in broader context. The controller whether, and accountant general is 67. Yeah. Mm. We have uh, Kofi Juma is 68, CEO of Gihok. 67 years, Isaac Ose, CEO of uh, Tor. Kwame um, Owusu. Uh, 67, mm -hmm. Ghana Maritime Authority. Mm -hmm. Could you also free years, uh, John? 65 mm -hmm. years. We also have uh, Anthony Siasari, 65 years. DG, Ghana Health Service. Um, Samuel Ano, doctor, PA, um, uh, doctor uh, 64 years. CEO of uh, National Health Insurance. And then we have uh, KK Sapon, Dr. KK Sapon, 65 years. Mm. You see, so my point is simple. If we think that we they, want they to amend. Been if we, I think less than two less years. Than two years. Yes. March will be, let's say, two years. Yeah. But Roland, we so also need to accept that, that, that is what that, is that what the act says? They, they, they have you looked at that? They knew their fate before. It was not they for were past 60. All of them were past 60 when, when they were appointed. See, I have, that's I a have question I'm against them. But we also need to respect the law. What does the act say? Yes, Frank. But why didn't we respect the law before appointing Frank? What is the respect? Frank, you see, the point is that these people... If we say we're respecting the law, these people were above 60 when they were being appointed. Uh -huh. They were not told they were Actually, given a contract. They yeah, were They were not told they were I'm given a contract of two years. Was, and I'm saying uh, that... Uh, when, was, have when, you seen the appointment letter? No. I mean, we haven't even so seen the appointment letter. So let them... We do the appointment and so letters. If, when if, their names were announced. So, yes. We were not told they were given a contract of that two years. on the face value of it... And I'm saying that, Frank, I'm saying that even if they were given a Frank, they would not be given a fair deal. What I'm saying is that... It's a very conclusion. What I'm saying is that... But I'm saying Rola, that going no forward, uh -huh. going forward, we may have to look at the possibility of amending the act if we want, we so desire. We don't have. But to. as it stands now, I don't know what we can do with it. If the person attains a retiring age, what can you do with it? So it stands to the discretion of the appointing authority whether to extend it or not. And, <laughs> well, I don't know. But the point is that we should, we should stop reading certain meanings and saying that, oh, well, because they have. Uh, issues uh, and, the, and the presidency wants to do away with them or they have presidential ambitions, that is why this, this story is coming up. That would be very unfair. I mean, it would be most unfair for anybody to draw that conclusion. As long as the law states that, well, an atta attaining that age, retiring age, you have to, 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 be, to exit, I think that we have to respect the law. But I also concede that they have something to offer the nation. And so, on the face value of it, 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 be, it appears quite unfair, and we may have to look at it in broader context. Uh, that's the uh, point that I want to So, Hini, so yeah, we, yeah. we've had um, a certain norm in the mm -hmm. Fourth Republic. Mm -hmm. So, we've had all these um, ages exceeding 60, and um, mm -hmm. if any contract was renewed at all, mm -hmm. we've had people serving in, in office way, way past those ages mm -hmm. that have been stated in the Public Services Act. Mm -hmm. 
at the end of the day, is it about what the person can give? Mm. Um, for example, there's an argument currently in academia, and, and Kojo Yangtze, for example, seems mm. to think that that's a specialized area or institution. They need mm. the best of the brains because as you're growing up, you have better experience, you're, you're a storehouse of knowledge. Mm. Mm. And uh, just asking you like that, you're being asked. It's not the best way to go about it. You know, that is why the... Uh, but this one, everybody could, could be appointed once you're... You're a loyal person to a party and uh, whoever, mm. you could be appointed. Mm. Yeah, uh, Roland, I think that maybe it's important at this point that we avert our mind to the specific act we are talking about, 1996 Act 527. It states uh, as follows, that section 199 of the Constitution is amended by the insertion after clause 3 of the following. Quote, notwithstanding clause 1 of this article, a public officer who has retired from the public office after attaining the age of 60 years may, where the exigencies of the service require, be engaged for a limited period of not more than two years at a time, but not exceeding five years in all, mm -hmm. and upon such other terms and conditions as the appointing authority shall determine. So that is where the 221 comes in force. <coughs> And that is where, again, your question about whether if the person is beyond 60 and his services are still required, he can't be engaged. I think the framers of the law and the Constitution foresaw that there may be a situation where somebody beyond 60 will still have the capacity and the know-how that the nation will require. So in a circumstance like that, the president can rely on this Act 527 and still engage that person. So that is why I am of the view that, look, the law does not say categorically that you have to be 60 before you are engaged. You can even be beyond 60. And if your services are required, you can still be engaged for a period of not more than two years, but you'll be entitled to two more and one. So my issue with this dismissal First of all, it's not a dismissal. It is, it is, it is. Whatever you call Retirement. it, they have been fired. Whatever it is, you know, um, my problem with it is that when they were being appointed, we're not told they were appointed under this act. Mm -hmm. We're told that they were appointed as CEOs to these companies, just as any other person. You recall that even at that time, some people raised the issue of their ages. But we're, we're told that, look, the president has the authority to keep them. If we're even told that they were appointed based on this act and given a contract of two years, if you are firing them after two years, the legitimate question to ask is, why didn't they impress you enough to warrant another two years extension? Because as president, you still have that authority to extend it by two years. So it will be very legitimate for one to ask, why you are not extending it? Is it that they have not impressed you after their performance but, but seriously, in, in, yeah, in yeah, two I mean, years. But seriously, the point... Do you get it? But I look at the story. Yeah. I look at the story again. I think that we are, you know, belaboring the point unnecessarily. Mm. I don't see any official communication from the presidency. Look at the story. <laughs> I mean, this is... You haven't practiced journalism. No, 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 this stories is very are planted. This okay, is very that's okay. This, is, this cannot be described as an official correspondence right, right. from the president. We so get you. I think we are... We, if, we are crying we are just yeah, well, I, I, so right, I, hear, right. I hear there's a concern that too many of them are from one region, mm -hmm. and there may be some changes to oh, say that the, the first release was a bad... That the police are telling us. <laughs> you know, that, so, from you know that we began a crusade to the whole of last week, Koji Yangson was in yeah, the Takradi area, and it's environs. Bring back our tardy girls. And uh, now the police are giving us some perspective that um, the suspect has given the assurance that the girls are said to be alive. And, um, well, today the Daily Graphic and our own check is indicating the police seem to have broadened their scope. And especially the logistics and uh, human resource that will be needed to the U.S. And, and the U.K. have also been roped in to bring in their own perspective to these investigations. And it, it looks like we're getting somewhere. But the question should have been, the first was in August, recorded in August. Mm. Could the police have done better 
and where they are now, um, is it too late or is it just the right way to go? Let me start with you, Sonny. Well, um, I think the issue in Takrade is very heartbreaking. Very, very heartbreaking. I mean, if you listen to the stories as they are being narrated by uh, family members, you can't but help to think of, you know, what state you would have been in if you were directly related to uh, these children who can't be traced. And if you are a family person, I mean, it will touch you in more ways than one. And I am very, very disappointed that it has taken our security agencies this long to, you know, unravel the situation. And it is simply, simply unacceptable. I want to commend the media houses that made this matter, you know, um, um, we topical. Made, we made it. You know, I have listened to other media houses. I think that you, particularly and GH1, I must say, have championed this so, so well. And I think that you deserve commendation. I think that it is based on your reports that the security agencies seem to even now be pretending to be acting. And I think it is unacceptable. Pretending? Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I think it is simply unacceptable. They should be leading the discussion. In fact, they should have been giving you areas and hints and leads to follow. But it is the other way around. It is like the tail wagging the head. And that, for me, is, un is unacceptable. And our security agencies uh, uh, and our government must set up. Because the general insecurity in the country is just, is just uh, 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 terrible and it's frightening. Then we have to have some closing comments on the subject. And we're talking kidnapping. And yeah. um, you wanted to... Well, uh, it's sad that it happened. Uh, it's very unfortunate. Uh, but I don't think this is right to say that it's rather the media that is leading the, the police administration well, we in seem this to investigation. Have, uh, open the fire. That is your view. I mean, what you are doing, the, the crusade you launched, I support it. And it's done elsewhere. I mean, it's something that we should also put. It doesn't necessarily reflect that you are leading the police, you know, in the investigation. I also have some facts that speak to the contrary. I know the police is doing uh, some good work, especially with this investigation. But I also concede that they have to do more. Because, you know, crime is becoming sophisticated. It's gotten sophisticated. And if you look at the nature of our borders, it, it means that they have to up their game. You know, we've, we are living in a different regime where the stamp policing is not just about your physique, you know, and equipment. It is more of intelligence. And I will want to plead to the, the police leadership, the IGP, that we are not living in ordinary times. Um, I agree, getting the, the stories are becoming too many. And so we will appeal that they should up their game. You know, uh, we, we know the good efforts from government in terms of vehicles and stuff, but the security goes beyond that. So we will, we will plead with the, the respected IGP. You know, he's my in-law. Okay. Uh, we will plead with them that they will have to up their yeah, game. Um, otherwise, it David, creates a very bad. David, as I said, is your you, in law. Yes. You married a daughter. Yeah, it creates a very bad. Biological image. daughter. I'm just doing a full disclosure. So that <laughs> is it biological daughter? <laughs> yes. So that uh, we, we, we get. Ah, you, are you are heavily protected. I'm there. married to a Navrongo lady. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we, we have to up our game. And uh, the citizen race should also be up and coming. In information sharing, I think this is when we are also able to dispense of that. Uh, well, it will help the police administration to be able to unravel. Roland, uh, there's a little the caution. Situation. Even though I still insist that the media seem to be leading the way, <laughs> uh, the police must up their game. But I want to also caution the media that in the good work that they are doing, they also have to be mindful of uh, the leads that they give to some of these criminals. I listened to some of the reports and I cringed. I didn't think that some information that was put out should have been put out because I thought the criminal could have taken advantage of that information to hide further. So maybe sometimes in our reports we need to be very cautious about 
what is good for the public consumption. And remember, the public includes the criminal who is still well, out in there. In the absence of anything, yeah, the who media is still, who will is still, have to be cautious. Yes, yes, we'll it's be extremely cautious. cautious. I, I mean, they talk about you know, the same numbers that called at different places. I thought the criminal shouldn't have known that the police have already detected this because it will enable him to change another way of communicating. So mm. that is just the caution. And it I is on that score that we want to comment the police. It is not everything that the police put out there. And it doesn't mean that if they don't put it those information Since out August. there. It doesn't necessarily mean that Frank, they're not prayer. In law of the Ghana Police Service. Uh, there is a member of parliament <laughs> for Insta Woman I have not told you this. You really have known. Yeah, sure. But you are playing no. this team with it. Oh, no, no, Miss Chief. I think that's you and I. You're my senior. So you are defending I, your in-laws. Okay, I, we are. I, I love your sincerity. But look, the police are doing good work. Mm -hmm. They just need to have their game in this perspective. Yeah. Uh, Alassane Suhine is also a member of parliament for Tamale North. And I love your perspective for the historical perspective was important as well. I have some not too good memories Let's celebrate that on that day together. and the incident the three days before the main incident and the killing. Not too good.